So you just got into 3D printing. You're trying to find the printer that works best for you. Not sure if you should get a cheaper $100, $150 printer or a more expensive $400, $500, or maybe even $1,000 printer. Today, I will be going over the Anycubic Cobra Neo, a cheaper printer that you can get off of Amazon for about $150. Bucks. And we're going to see how easy it is to set it up and print a Captain Rex helmet on it. So if you just got into this hobby and you're trying to figure out if you wanna go with a cheaper printer or a more expensive one, I will show you today what it's like to use a smaller and cheaper one. I usually use the Creality CR10S, which has a bigger build plate, which allows me to print full helmets in one print. With these smaller, cheaper printers, you're gonna be printing out a lot more pieces, which you're gonna to have to weld together which will add a little bit more time and a little bit more work. So I'm gonna open this box up, show you guys how to set up the printer, um, set up Cura so that you can slice your helmet and do everything else you need to do to be able to start making helmets on your cheap $150 Anycubic Cobra Neo printer. And the steps that I'm showing you guys today are gonna apply to other smaller printers like the Creality Ender 3. Um, it's also a smaller printer with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250. So if you don't have this exact model, don't worry, the steps are pretty similar. As you can see here, you're going to want to set up your printer. Make sure you follow those instructions carefully. Um, you might need to make adjustments in order to tighten some bolts like belts and whatnot. And that is just going to help with your overall setup and the successfulness of your first few prints. So once again, it is very important that you double check that you have completed all the steps. The assembly of the printer is very important. And if there is a loose bolt or a loose belt, that could cause problems later down the road. So just make sure that you're securing everything properly. Make sure that nothing is loose on your printer because that could create layer lines and your prints won't come out very clean. As you can see with my printer here, everything is pretty secure. When I go to shake or move anything, nothing is wobbling. So that's important. That will help my prints come out cleaner. Another thing that is super important is make sure that the voltage is set correctly. There will be a switch on the back. If you live in the States, make sure you switch that to 115. Um, if not, you could ruin your printer. So make sure to check the voltage for your country and set it accordingly. So now that we've double checked and everything's been secured properly and the correct voltage has been set, we're gonna to wanna to plug in our printer and load up the filament. So as you can see here, I have plugged in the printer. The printer is on. I selected the prepare option to preheat the nozzle and load the filament. So filament is in. Um, just like any other printer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the distance between the nozzle and the build plate are good. And with this, pr this particular printer. Um, it's different from the Creality CR-10S. There aren't four knobs to adjust each of the corners. Um, the plate will remain flat. The only thing that you can adjust is the Z offset. So the idea is pretty similar. I have another video that goes over leveling the CR-10S, but with this printer, essentially I am just going to adjust the Z offset and slide a piece of paper in between the bed and the nozzle. And I'm going to keep doing that until it's ever so slightly resisting. So I don't want it sliding freely. That means that the nozzle is too far from the bed. And I don't want it stuck in between the nozzle and the bed because that means the nozzle is too close to the bed. So just like with our printer setup, you're going to want to take your time here. This is very important. Um, if you don't go through these initial steps correctly the first time, you might deal with other issues um, if you don't correctly set up the Z offset and the distance between the nozzle and the build plate, that could cause a clog. And then you're gonna be taking apart your extruder. And if you just got your printer, that's the last thing you wanna do is have to buy new parts and replace the nozzle and, and all that. So make sure to do this correctly, take your time. And if you don't get it the first time, go back and take care of it and readjust it um, this printer in particular makes it super easy to adjust the Z offset on the main screen. It lists Z offset, and if you toggle to it, you can click on it and adjust it. And you can do that mid-print, 
Um, later on, as I'm printing the Rex helmet, I'm actually forced to use that because of an issue with reloading filament. So Z offset will be your best friend for making sure you're the right distance from the build plate. So take your time and make sure to do it correctly. Right here, the paper is not able to go in between the nozzle and the build plate, so that means they're too close. So I just need to lower it a little bit, make sure that paper can slide under. So still a little bit too close, give it a little bit more space. And after multiple adjustments, I'm finally able to get it to slide under and get that ever so slight resistance. So the printer is set up, everything's secured, the Z offset is set appropriate for your printer. Next is to do a test print. So the little SD card that you get with the printer will come with a pre-sliced model. So with this printer, is an OWL. So I had the printer preheat the bed, the nozzle, filament was loaded up, bed was leveled, and I went and printed this little OWL. So first impressions with this print, um, on the bottom, there was a little bit of a layer shift, as you can see there. Um, I'm not sure why it did that. I didn't have any issues with all the Rex pieces after. Um, it might have been because there were too many layers, and it just shifted mid-print. So that was the only issue. Everything else looked good. The next step is to set up your profile in Cura for your Anycubic Cobra Neo. And I actually found a YouTube video online that went through in good detail each of the steps needed to set up your settings for this printer because unfortunately there isn't already a preset for the Cobra Neo. Um, other any cubic printers are there, just the Cobra Neo is not, unfortunately. So you have to go set up a custom FFF printer, um, name it appropriately, then you're gonna adjust the build volume. Um, the video has some references for some code that you post into the start and end G code and all that. There's also two profiles for printing with PLA and PETG that are already loaded on the SD card. So I just loaded those in and I can select those in the top right menu. So if you go there to the top right and scroll down, there's already a presetting for PLA that I uploaded. Once again, it was already downloaded on the SD card. If you can't find it there, then you can go to any cubic, the any cubic website and download it from there and upload the profile similarly. I'll post the link to that video so you guys can go check that out, but that's essentially how you set up Cura for this printer. Once it's set up, then you're gonna upload your files. I got mine from Galactic Armory and they're already pre-sliced for smaller printers, which is nice. So if you go to Galactic Armory, use my code 3DELPRINT to get a discount, and you can do the Rex helmet just like me. It's already pre-sliced. So as you can see here, I'm just printing out all the pieces. Once again, with this printer, it took 10 prints instead of just one or two with my larger printer. The overall quality was pretty good considering it was the very first print. There were a few mishaps in the layer lines and that back round piece actually morphed quite a bit, which was unfortunate. Um, like I said before, there was an issue with reloading filament. I paused the print and then switched out the filament and loaded in the new filament and it was actually one millimeter off. So it wasn't printing on the piece and I had to adjust the Z offset to save that print, which was unfortunate. But with all these smaller pieces, the next step is to weld all the parts together. So I have another video that goes over this, but essentially I'm just gonna use tape and my soldering iron. And I'm just gonna go along the seams on the inside, doing little dashes and little X's, melting the plastic together to secure those pieces together to hold them. It took me around an hour to do this. So once again, if you just buy a bigger printer, you won't have to deal with this issue because you'll be able to print an entire helmet in one piece. So that is a downside to printing with a smaller printer. But as you can see here, and what's nice is I printed in multiple colors. Um, I have all my pieces welded together, so you can kind of see the seam lines. And like I said before, the morphing on the back was unfortunate. So I melted it down a little bit with a soldering iron. I'm gonna have to go in with a lot of filler and kind of fill that in. There's a little bit of a gap right there as well 
So once again, that's something that you may have to deal with with printing smaller pieces. And it's not the end of the world. You can use a lot of filler um, to kind of fill those in and take care of that. It's just more work and more time. So bigger printer, you won't have to deal with that issue. And I decided um, this is actually something that was new and I've never done it before, but I decided to try it out. I used a hot glue gun to kind of fill in all those gaps between each of the parts. So it does two things for me. It fills in that empty space. So it's something that I can sand and it'll already be filled. It'll make my job a lot easier. It does that, but it also secures the parts a little bit better. The plastic's already melted together, but putting the hot glue in those seams definitely helps as well. So once again, this is the first time I've done this and it actually worked pretty well. I am impressed with how it turned out and it just filled in all those big gaps that would have been super annoying to fill with Bondo or wood filler. And I'm probably still gonna have to use a lot of filler, but it, like I said, it creates that extra bond. On the back, once again, it's not looking too good. I had to put a lot of glue in there. Um, so I already got the filling process started, which is nice. Um, and it just helps secure those parts together as well. So just an idea, you can try it out or you don't have to, you can just use more conventional wood filler and Bondo and whatnot, but it turned out pretty good for me. But there you have it. It is in pretty rough condition. There's still a lot more work to be done, but it is possible to make a helmet on a smaller printer. As you can see here, it's fully printed. It's fully assembled. I have a lot of smoothing to do, a lot of layer lines to fill, but it is a helmet nonetheless. So up to you. It is possible to do it on a smaller printer, or you can be like me and use a bigger printer. That's what I recommend. But if you can only afford a smaller printer, follow these steps. It'll help you start along your journey of making props. Hope this video helped. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.